Hey, thanks for dropping by for episode two of Star Citizen Retrospective. We've got a lot to discuss today, including the Hurston security armor, the Banner Defender, item 2.0, the 890 jump, and the whole C. There's plenty of interesting info in today's episode, so let's get right into it. First up, we're checking in on an episode of Calling All Devs from July 2nd, where a question was asked to system designer Vitus Okunis about life support systems and how many people will be able to be in a single ship before overloading the system. Vitus explained how each room has a volume, and each volume is filled with a certain amount of gas. There are producers of oxygen, and there are consumers of oxygen, which are the players. And if there are too many consumers in a space, then obviously those producers will be overwhelmed and you will run out of oxygen in that space. You can also shut off life support systems, close doors, seal compartments off, and play around with the amount of gas in a specific room. This could make for some very interesting gameplay when it comes to breaching and boarding ships. However, we haven't seen any development on this unless I'm supposed to die when I take my helmet off and my terrapin. Systems designer Andrew Nicholson got to answer our second question of the day, which was, can we keybind specific ship actions? Short answer, yes, they want to do that. Long answer, you can do it already, but we want to make it better. Because right now, keybindings oftentimes don't stick, which can get pretty annoying. After that, we were graced with the presence of lead systems designer Dan Truffin for another question regarding the law system and how that will factor into gameplay for early players. Essentially the question was, if I'm not good enough to take on other players, will I still survive and be able to play the game how I want to? Dan basically laid out for us how the law system is there to protect beginners and people who want a more calm play style and while that's something that they're going to enforce starting with 3.6 it's not necessarily a guarantee of safe gameplay you always need to keep your head on a swivel and always be ready for that griefer because people find ways around these systems it won't be that popular in a beginner system like stanton but it's still something to keep in mind like i said we only just started getting the law system in 3.6 so we still don't really see this in the game yet as it can still be a pretty dangerous place for beginners or people who don't want to see combat. So while we've seen some headway here, we're still waiting for a beginner area for people to learn the game without being harassed. And our last question of the day is for senior systems designer Johnny Jasivius in Foundry42 UK regarding the plans for non-combat personal equipment. Johnny mentioned the multi-tool, which can superficially repair ships, cut, mine, and even use a small tractor beam, though we haven't seen any of these applications in-game other than the Squadron 42 gameplay. He also mentioned that they would like to experiment with things like deployable shields, mines, throwables, stim packs, possible illegal drug substances, Really just additional throwables and consumables, but they need to go through a testing process to figure out if these things will work in the game. And we've only seen one mention of this so far, which was in the Squadron 42 roadmap. And now onward to the second shortest around the verse to date on July 5th, clocking in at 4 minutes and 40 seconds. Now we were told that work was continuing on some Hurston security armor, but what we saw doesn't really look like what we've gotten in game so not sure if they've scrapped that or maybe it's been put on the back burner and they're waiting for the new cloth technology we just haven't seen this model in the game yet so maybe take this with a grain of salt when I say that what we're being shown here was mentioned at CitizenCon last year to be Hurston security armor so Hurston security yeah so, so that is one of the Hurston security guards I think Chris then showed off a new mission type in which the player destroys satellites using the new prop system which allows them to equip things like shields and weapons. This was the first mission using a new modular system which allows them to create deeper missions. Personally, I don't think the basic missions have progressed enough since then, however we are looking at some new improvements on the horizon so we'll see what they do with that. 
Next, Chris and Sandy showed off some new contracts which would be coming available to players. These contracts would include FPS combat with AI in the game. These contracts were delayed from 3.2 to 3.3 because they had more important things they wanted to push out in that update. But we're now a year later and the FPS combat is still not all that convincing. This could be down to AI, which has seen some improvements over the last year, but I also believe that some of this is networking problems, so hopefully object container streaming on the server side will be able to help with that. Regardless, it's been a year, we haven't seen much improvement, so I'm gonna go ahead and say this is not where I expected AI to be, given the state of FPS gameplay a year ago. Now we have seen some improvements in 3.3, 3.4, and 3.5 and are expecting more in 3.7 through 3.9, but like I said, this could be a network problem. So while we will see AI improvements, we might still be throwing headshots at these guys while they're running in circles. Speaking of network improvements, Chris and Sandy also spoke about the improvements that were being made on client-side object container streaming. At the time, we didn't realize that was different from server-side object container streaming, which we're waiting for now. And while it's not on the roadmap, we are seeing that they're testing it through the monthly reports, which is very good. The next day was Reverse Diverse on July 6th. It was a hour-long Q&A session with Sean Tracy and Todd Pappy. We got to ask some questions about 3.2 as well as some other topics, including the Origin 300i rework, which they told us to wait and see about, as well as the new cargo hauler, the Hull C. Now there hasn't been much talk of the whole sea recently, but in this past year we did see a few leaks of the ship, and also it's appeared on the roadmap, which is good news for cargo haulers as the caterpillar was feeling a little bit small by now. What was really holding back the whole sea was cargo depots as well as larger sized SCUs. So now that we're going to have more cargo that's able to be hauled across the Stanton system, the whole sea should be a more viable option. They also spoke about the delay we were seeing on the Vanguard Harbinger and Sentinel at the time, and we now see from 3.6 that they've been working on a rework for the whole line of ships. However, the Harbinger and Sentinel are still delayed till 3.7. It's a little bittersweet, but at least the whole series is looking closer to the concept. We also touched on the possibility of recoloring our HUDs, and while we don't see that functionality yet, the Gladius has recently got a remake, and chat can now be recolored, so putting those two together, I think that maybe we could see that functionality coming with the next HUD update. Alrighty, moving onward to Calling All Devs on July 9th, we got a question for John Crew, Vehicle Pipeline Director, as what is left for the item 2.0 conversion? Now, with John Crew being the vehicle pipeline director, he gave us the vehicle answer, which was basically that we needed the power systems, the heat systems, degradation, thrusters, missiles and countermeasures, and the vehicle section of item 2.0 would basically be completed. As always, these features are iterated on, and you can see that we have power systems V2 coming up later this year. So. You can expect improvement to all these systems as we move on, and we still don't have missiles and countermeasures turned over to item system 2.0. And while the system has made progress in the last year, we still haven't gotten physicalized components, which we expected in the Terrapin earlier this year. The next question was directed towards Luke Presley, the lead designer for Star Citizen Live, asking if we would get a no respawn mode in Arena Commander, uh, allowing for combat that's more reminiscent of the PU. Luke Presley basically explained that Arena Commander wasn't popular enough for that yet and it would be difficult for people to find matches and matchmaking if you simply died and were sent back to the main menu. This seems a bit like a self-fulfilling prophecy in that if you don't improve Arena Commander then people won't play Arena Commander. It seems to me that this is something that they view as a luxury that we won't be seeing improved for quite some time as we haven't seen many major changes in the last year. And the next question for Luke Presley was inquiring about how difficulty will scale based on this different ship that you may be flying at the time. So if you show up with a hammerhead, will there be more enemies spawned for you? And uh, he stated that that wouldn't be the case, that 
there will be various missions available to you with a suggested ship type or party size. While we've seen that in 3.5, having a higher crime stat can lead to more dangerous ships such as a hammerhead interdicting you. This leads me to believe that with random encounters, it'll be your threat level that dictates the amount or type of ships that come after you, while structured missions will have suggested ship types or party sizes that are given to you, as we've seen in 3.5. Now on to Around the Verse on July 12th where we get to see some work on the 890 jump with some white box blockouts of the interior. Over the course of the last year we've gotten to see various stages of the 890 jump's production including a gray box phase of the same area as well as some iterations on various interior areas between the gray box and final art stage. We did also get to see some progression of the exterior of the ship, which saw a lot of backer feedback and received quite a bit of iteration over the course of just several months. Chris and Sandy touched on the R&D, which was taking place at the time for the brand new Defender. And unfortunately, while we were hearing about it then, we still don't have the ship as it was delayed from the 3.6 patch. Although we have seen the development and the progress that's gone through the materials and the design over the course of the last year. You can see differences in the white and gray box design versus the old concept images. They have explained that this design has taken quite a few turns as it is the template for future Banu ships, so they really need to nail it, which is why it was delayed from Alpha 3.6, which we should already have, to Alpha 3.7 in the next patch and from prior patches even before that. Next we got to see some work that was being done on the modular utilitarian hangar system. Now, we have seen multiple versions of these hangars in different locales in the last year. We've seen them in R Corp, and we've also seen some of the work that's being done on those in Microtech. These hangars are a great example of how when they create the tools, it makes the work a lot easier in the future. These Microtech hangars are probably much easier to create than the Hurston ones, as they've already had the templates, they just needed to change the design. Finally, we got to look at how they were designing HABs in different locales, including R Corp, Hurston, and future locations. While a lot of what was spoken about has been incorporated into HABs in the PU, including interactable objects and various little trinkets around your room, we still don't quite have the views or the windows or the general feel that I get from some of these concept images, which we may never get, but I'm really looking forward to getting some more varied HABs, some bigger spaces, um, and some multi-level HABs in the future, which they have spoken about. And with that, we wrapped up another episode of Star Citizen Retrospective with yours truly, Space Tomato, from July 2nd to July 13th. As always, I'd like to thank everybody for joining me for this. I did get myself a new microphone, so that definitely helps with the production value, but I'm also looking to make some tweaks here and there with the features in this video and hopefully build more substantial reports on what's been progressed upon and what has been missed. If you like what you saw in this video and want some more of the same, then might I suggest that subscribe button? Go ahead and plant your roots and stick around. In two weeks time we'll be going over some Todd Pappy talks and looking at a new ship that was unveiled about a year ago. We'll have to see if they've made any progress on it in the next episode of Star Citizen Retrospective.